How ironic, Diana's public life began and ended the same way, with the paparazzi in pursuit. From the minute her name was mentioned even as the possible choice of Prince Charles to be his wife, to be the future queen, the shy kindergarten teacher began running away. So you still have to do that. a nice picture, please. And so it continued. Mom, please. Sure, George. And yet, these same paparazzi made her the star she became. No other member of the royal family held their attention the same way. She grew into the glamour. She caught on, figured out that her stunning clothes, her beauty, her ever so slightly coquettish glances were the fast track to the attention, to the approval she felt she wasn't getting in her marriage. For a while, what the public saw appeared to be the royal couple on a roll. Everything seemed to work to their advantage. Reporters and photographers, I among them, huddled in a nasty cold rain for days outside the hospital where Prince William was born. Just before the princess emerged, the sun came out and shone down brilliantly on the future king and his mother, perfect for pictures. But Diana learned soon enough that the coin had its flip side. On the one hand, she needed the press. On the other, she became the object of a nonstop photographic feeding frenzy. <laughs> Photographer Mark Saunders followed her everywhere even the gym. She said, who do you sell your pictures to? And, and I said, uh, I'll sell them to anyone. And she said, yeah, lines the wallet well, though, don't they? And I said, well, yes, but, um, you know, it, it is still just a job. And uh, I asked if I could take a picture of her, and she said, uh, a picture of me now? No, I don't think so. And I said, oh, well, make me a few bob. And she said, well, how would you like me then? And I said, well, topless would be nice. And she laughed and, uh, and said, uh, Yes, that would be nice. The pressure got to her. In 1992, Princess Diana decided to take a year off from her public duties. I hope you can find it in your hearts to understand and to give me the time and space that has been lacking in recent years. <laughs> She may have taken time off, but the paparazzi didn't. If she couldn't protect herself, Diana tried at least to protect her children. She learned a trick, no face, no photo. But watch, she still manages to bend down and accept flowers from a child. The trouble with her determination to escape the paparazzi was that Diana herself forever fed the beast. Her personal problems, her bulimia, the collapse of her marriage, her affairs, all kept them after her, especially her affairs. Journalist Richard Kay. Any man who gets um, involved with the Princess of Wales has got to be prepared for the most astonishing intrusions in his life. Dodi Fayed was. He was Hollywood, a movie producer. He was also a man with a reputation for loving and leaving beautiful, high-profile women for seeking the limelight. There was a certain Jackie Onassis quality to the romance between Dodi Fayed and Diana. Perhaps their relationship was literally an accident waiting to happen. Diana's brother, Earl Spencer. It would appear that every proprietor and editor of every publication that has paid for intrusive and exploitative photographs of her, encouraging greedy and ruthless individuals to risk everything in pursuit of Diana's image, has blood on his hands today. Now that Diana, Princess of Wales, is dead, she seems more than ever like a beautiful sad butterfly who flew ever so briefly into the light and was burned. You, press that killed her, even as the world condemns the paparazzi who may have contributed to her death, they're out there, snapping away at what's left. <laughs> <laughs>